Welcome to Sun Valley Church. Would you stand with us and sing? Let's give God all of our praise because he deserves it all in this place. Come on. And out of the wilderness into your deliverance, look where I'm standing now. And these hands that once were chained are now lifted high in grace. Look where I'm standing now. And look where I'm standing now. I stand on the chain wrecking, miracle making, powerful name of Jesus on the body racing, brother. His promise to us. Come on. When I was lost and all alone, your presence was where I found home. And you were there and you're here right now. In in every low, you never left me without hope. And you were good, and you're good right now. Listen to our voice, we sing. I've witnessed your faithfulness. I've seen you be life with it. So I pour out my praise again. You're worthy. God, you're worthy of all of it. You 
Your promises never fail. I've got stories I live to tell. So I'll pour out my praise again. You're worthy, God. You're worthy of all of it. down your life to rescue us the savior then the savior now thank you jesus but even death was not the end you conquered hell so i could live resurrecting then resurrecting now come on we stand on that truth we sing God who answers prayers, come on. Chorus together one more time. We sing. And I've witnessed your faithfulness, and I've seen you breathe life within. So I pour out my praise again. You're worthy, God. You're worthy of all of it. Your promises never fail. I've got stories I live to tell. So I pour out my praise again. You're worthy, God, you're worthy of all of it. Let's lift up a shout of praise. Well, I love all of the songs we get to sing here at Sun Valley, but maybe you can relate to this. There's always that one song that's just a little bit different. You know, it's a little special to you. It's personal. This next song that we're gonna sing is that for me. It's really personal to me. And my hope as we go through the next few moments together, maybe this can become something that's personal to you too. 
So we just sang about all the things that we've seen God do in our lives and in the lives around us. And this next song that we're gonna sing to me, it's a promise. It's a commitment saying, God, I've seen what you've done. I know who you are. I know that you're good. I know you're trustworthy. I know you're faithful. I know that you love me. And so I promise you that I'm gonna sing your praise for all of my days with every breath that I have. And so I wanna challenge you guys today as we go through this song together, would you join me? And would you take a minute to just meet with Jesus? And maybe you never have before, maybe you need to again, but would you say, God, I promise you that no matter what's going on in my life, in my highs or in my lows, I'm gonna trust in your unfailing love and I will sing praise to you because you have been good to me. So come on, let's do it together. And so my life you have been faithful. And so my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will see. It's right. 
you guys. I love hearing all of your voices singing so loud. And I just wanna say, man, is there anybody out there that made it personal tonight? Is there anybody who said, yes, I will all of my days? If that's you tonight, I know it's me. As we sing this chorus one more time, would you lift your voices with me? And would you lift your hands with me as we sing this one more time? Hey everyone, my name is Paul and this is Christiana. And we wanted to share with you a few things that are happening at Sun Valley right now. The first thing is that we're in the midst of our series, Courageous Faith. It has already been incredible and inspiring. Watch this from this past weekend. God has you exactly where he wants you. No matter what office you find yourself in, what school you go to, what team you're on, what neighborhood you're in, even what family you're a part of, God has a purpose for you right there. Just like God put me on that team for a purpose, just like he put Taylor and Mario on that team for a purpose that stretches on to this moment in this room today. Your presence is your purpose. It was awesome having Ben join us and we have so much more in store for you this month. So if you want to catch up on any past messages, be sure to download the Sun Valley app and create an account so that you can save your favorite messages, podcasts, and so much more. Also, in the app, you have the opportunity to give. Here at Sun Valley, we give first, save second, and we live on the rest. To those who give, thank you. You're investing in so many things that God is doing all around us. And if you're not giving yet, but want to take that step today, you can do so right there in the app or online at give.sv.cc. And don't forget, it's time to sign up for summer camps. Every child and every student matters to God. And we want to invest in their relationship with Him this summer. Summer camps are one of the best ways to do that, and they can help build meaningful friendships and experience the love of God in new ways. Jesus changes everything, and He wants to use summer camp to do that for the next generation. So check out all of our camps from kindergarten all the way to high school at camps.sv.cc. And now it's our prayer that you lean into what God has for you today as we continue our series, Courageous Faith. Hey, welcome everybody. I want to welcome everybody at all of our locations. And uh, as we start today, I just got to tell you this. So I got new hearing aids a while back and I can hear everybody singing and you guys are really good. <laughs> uh, just love hearing, hearing you worship. And uh, usually I sing like really loud. Sometimes my wife's like, tone it down, dude. <laughs> but um, it was really nice just to hear everybody worship. Today, God is good. We can trust him. And we're continuing our series today talking about courageous faith. Uh, I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to dive in. Would you guys pray with me? Maybe you'd be willing just to turn your palms up. That's a posture of receiving. And let's pray together. Holy Spirit, thank you that you are here. Thank you that you will meet us right where we are. Whether we're online or at one of our locations, we're in the room, Holy Spirit, meet us and speak to us. Speak through these who are going to share part of their story. Speak through your word and take it past our minds and into our hearts and lead us however you wish. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. So we're in a series called Courageous Faith, and here's what we're, what we're doing. It's a little bit different here at Sun Valley. I was praying and thinking about uh, what we would do after Easter, and I just got this idea that um, we would let people in our church speak. And so last week, we heard from Ben Malcolmson. If you missed it, do yourself a favor and go online and watch and listen to what he shared with us. And today we're going to hear from some other folks in our church, and we'll do that more in in an interview. But here's what this series is about. If you're a follower of Jesus, God's called you to ministry. If you're really following Jesus, you're going to minister. You're going to give. You're going to serve. God, by his spirit, is going to prompt you to do certain things. And here's what I've learned in my life. Anytime God nudges me, whispers to me, asks me to do something, I'm always afraid to do it. Can anybody relate to what I'm saying? Just give me one of these if that's, yeah. Don't leave me all alone up here. <laughs> like that's, that's super normal. But that fear doesn't come from God. That fear comes from somewhere else. Because whatever he asks you to do, he will equip you to do it. Here's our verse for this series. This is 2 Timothy 1.7. And I'm showing this to you out of the New King James Version because I memorized this years ago. And that's the version I memorized it in. Look at what the Bible says. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. When the spirit moves in your life and you feel fear, that moving is from the spirit, but the fear is not from the spirit. And so what courageous faith does is it just pushes through the fear and follows the whisper, follows the nudge. Courageous faith chooses to obey. And so this week, we're going to hear some more folks in our church. And again, all through the series, you're not hearing from pastors or teachers. You're just hearing from regular people who attend Sun Valley. So would you guys give a very big Sun Valley welcome to Chris and Jihei Watson. Hey guys. Hi. Hey Chad. So you guys have been at Sun Valley for how long? We have been at Sun Valley for 19 years. About, yeah. Yeah, almost 19. 19 years. Okay, so I'll be here 20 years this summer. I so, feel like I've been here a couple months longer than you. But oh, it's not snap. a competition. It's not a competition. You can feel Kinda however feels like you want, is. but that would be inaccurate. <laughs> so, so don't go through feelings. How long have you guys been married? Yeah, a little over 18 years. Yeah. Okay, did you get married here? We got married at uh, the main campus. Uh, the original building was the B building. Which is where now, students are right student now. Student center now. Okay. Gilbert campus in the small building. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. great. It was so, the big building. Now it's the small building. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now there's lots of buildings. Yes. Yeah. Lots of change yeah. over time. Yeah. And you guys, your family has grown. A little bit, yeah, over the last 18 plus years, for sure. Yeah, yeah so it's changed a lot through the years. I'm going to yeah. show a picture of your family here. This is a pretty big family, so here they are. This is the Watsons. So let's just leave that picture up for a second. You guys can go ahead and count. It may take you a little bit. None of them are paid actors. We <laughs> To get through everybody. So how many children do you guys have? We have seven kids, and then our son-in-law is up there as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, so seven children, all biological? No, we have, do you want to answer this part? We have three biological kids, and then we have four adopted, and then the son-in-law, he eats at our house a lot, so yeah. we're yeah, thankful for that. Yeah. Um, and so three of them were adopted through foster care, and uh, the oldest one was adopted uh, just kind of as the Lord moved us. As an adult. As an adult, yeah, because yeah. we do believe every child, no matter how old you are, definitely yeah. deserves a family. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm going to just touch on your oldest for a second. So she was actually your babysitter. Yes, she started as, uh, actually she started, uh, she was mentored by my mom uh, in missions here at Sun Valley and then, um, and then watched our kids uh, a couple times, moved in with us, was gonna live with us for a year. Uh, God changed that plan and uh, I would say just a few months in, we knew that she was part of our family. 
and then when we adopted our uh, last two uh, girls, we adopted Kate with, with them. Yep. Okay. And then, you know, soon after that adoption, she was engaged and she got married, and so yeah. Chris walked her down the aisle, and so it's just a really beautiful, yeah. beautiful full and, circle moment. And that was the first uh, wedding at our South Gilbert campus. Yes. So. so again, not a competition, but yeah. if it was, uh, we won, we won yeah. that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, how big of a vehicle do you own? Like, how do you cart all these people around? Do you we, have a big van? We did have the big van for mm -hmm. a minute. Right now, we're down to just a regular Honda Odyssey because now a, a lot of our kids are driving, and, and so we're getting to that stage of life. But we did have the 15-passenger for a hot minute. A 15-passenger yes. van. Yes, which we accidentally... So, this is... I'm gonna just pause yeah. our conversation for a second. Like, some of you might be like, oh, I know these idiots, why are they yeah. on stage? Yes. And then some of you are like, oh, we well, don't know these people, but I don't like them already, yeah. and that's okay. And so, um, I just feel led to say, like, I think it's easy for us to tune people out, because you're like, eh, I can't relate to them, and especially when you hear, oh, foster care and adoption, they're gonna shove this down our throats. Like, no, we don't wanna do that. But what we feel led is that we're, very basic people. Yeah. We play cribbage, he watches the grass grow, mm -hmm. we have a lot of kids. Yeah. But like, you know, singing the songs about like the goodness of God, like we are so average and we're so thankful that God is good mm -hmm. and he has used us in any capacity and that our family looks the way that it does because we're very proud of our children. Uh, we're not awesome parents, you can ask them. They probably definitely are not listening to this because they're like, I do know these idiots. But, uh, you know, like we are so thankful that yeah. God is doing anything in and yeah. through us. And so that's why we're here. So even when we had the 15-passenger van, it was supposed to be a 12-passenger. I bought a 15-passenger on accident because I didn't count the seats. So yeah. or that's, the that's like how we're so messed up. But anyways. <laughs> well, sometimes we, there's so yeah. many, you just get confused. To me, that was a blessing. That's a yeah. bonus. Yeah. yeah, well, well today, to Jihei's point, I mean, today we are talking about um, courageous faith, and we're going to talk about obedience for, for everybody, but let's, let's talk foster care and adoption for a second. How did you guys get involved in foster care? Like, when you got married, were yeah. you like, one day we're going to foster? Not at all. Okay, so no. how did that happen? No, we, we had our three young kids at the time, and we were attending church here at Sun Valley, and prior to that, we had felt... Uh, that God was calling us to be on mission as a family, to do something as a family. We uh, talked about volunteering once every couple months, things like that, specifically for our kids to have those opportunities to serve. And we came here, and you guys showed a video from Foster Arizona uh, talking about foster care, the need. Uh, and, and the video you showed actually was a young boy who was speaking, his name was Brandon, was speaking almost directly to our family. He wanted two sisters and a brother, and we were like, ah, could God be telling us something? And we, not, we gave him the Heisman and said, no, he's not. And we ignored it. And then the next week, he showed another video. And it was very clear to both of us that, okay, we need to at least take that next step and find out what this is about. And never at any point did uh, we think that we were going to adopt um, even when we got into foster care. But again, God had different plans, and uh, I wouldn't change any of those for, for anything. Now, did, and I'll ask you, Jihei, so you see these two videos, and you think God's nudging you. Did he nudge both of you, or were you in agreement, yes. disagreement? Like, how did that go? He did nudge both of us, and so we love babies. Uh, my thing is, I like a child who doesn't talk back, and so babies don't talk, so that was pretty helpful. Not that I don't love my kids who definitely yeah. speak to me often, which yeah. is good. But, um, you know, at that season of life, we were like, I didn't feel safe or, uh, like, capable to mm -hmm. handle older kids, especially since we didn't have, our kids weren't even that old yet. Uh, and, of course, there are misconceptions with that, like, oh, I don't want a bad kid to come in here and hurt our kids, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, God gave us wisdom of like, as our kids are getting older, it's not like we're perfect and we're here rescuing these bad kids who are in trouble. Um, I also was aware that our kids could also potentially hurt or damage a mm -hmm. foster kid or someone coming into our home. And so we had so many rules, we had so many conversations about what does this look like for our whole family to be on mission together to serve children. And so uh, we, we fostered for about seven years, and honestly, we only fostered seven kids in that time. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them stayed for over a year. Some of them, you know, there were lots of different scenarios. 
And so again, I know there are foster families out there who have been fostering for longer, who have fostered more kids, and again, not a competition, friends. Yeah. But uh, thankful for that season that God brought us through, through, and I dragged my feet quite a bit as the like stay-at-home mom who was like, that's so adorable that you wanna do this great thing, and then you get to go to work every yeah. day. Um, <laughs> but you know, it really was a whole family journey, and God, <laughs> you know, he grew our, like, tested our marriage and mm -hmm. strengthened it uh, along the way. There were plenty of times where we were not on the same page, whether it was about adopting or continuing to foster or whatever that looked like. But so thankful that we had all of those seasons and that God was with us in all those seasons because we are still married. We do still love each other and like each other very much. Mm -hmm. And and we're thankful for you know that ministry that we were able to be a part of as a whole family. And even though we've stopped fostering, we continue to be advocates for it. And we love supporting now other foster families who are yeah. in the in the thick of it because we know what they're going through. Yeah. So how do you know um, when God is nudging you, when God is speaking to you about something? Because it's one thing for somebody like me to stand up here and go, "Hey, God, you know, led me this direction." But a lot of times we get confused about that. So I'll ask you, Chris, how did you guys know this is what God's asking us to do? Yeah, one, one thing that you've said before uh, up here is, is we know God's voice by being in God's presence. And for us, uh, a big piece of that is, is reading God's word, knowing what God says about uh, uh, different things. And of course, one of the verses we have this week is, is uh, James 1.27 and talking specifically about uh, taking care of widows and orphans in their time of distress and, uh, and not being, keeping oneself from being polluted from the world. So uh, that, we know that that's in, in line with what God is telling us. Uh, we pray together every night. Uh, if you're married, that's something that um, anytime we're talking to uh, a new, newly married couple or, or somebody about to get married, that is the most important thing to us is, is having that prayer time together every day being consistent about it, and doing that helps us to be, again, be able to hear God's voice and, uh, mm. and know when we're getting that nudge and when it's actually coming from God and it's not something we ate. So, yeah. 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 Well, let's, let's read the verse. This is James 1.27 as it comes here on the screen. The verse you referenced, Chris. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. So you talked about praying together. Gee, hey, is that like a super spiritual moment every day that light from heaven pours into the room? No, not so much, but it's something, you know, Chris's grandparents did our premarital counsel, uh, counseling, and so that was something that they encouraged us to do, and they had a beautiful marriage for over, what, 60 years or something, and yeah. so we were like, these people know what they're talking about, so let's listen to them. Um, so I'm thankful that they Im implanted that into us right from the get-go. And I think something that is easy for us to, I don't know, want to dismiss is like, oh, I've been married for 10 years or five mm -hmm. years or 20 years, and we've never prayed together, so it's too late. Yeah. And it's never too late to, mm -hmm. to definitely start praying together and to read the Bible and to be in the yeah. Word and to challenge and have this courageous faith that we're talking about. Um, I think Satan loves to just tell you, like, you missed it. Yeah. So your marriage is just going to be fine for now because you're just not going to pray together. And I'm telling you, you know, in this series of Courageous Faith, like what, what is the goal? It's not for everyone to foster and adopt. It's for mm -hmm. our faith to grow yeah. and for there to be fruit in our lives. And so if we are not seeing fruit in our marriage, why not? Maybe you, you need to communicate. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's counseling that needs mm -hmm. to be had. Or maybe you just need to like, we did a, a marriage um, devotional mm -hmm. and I was like, stare at each other for a minute. And we're like, Minutes a long time. Okay, weird. But, you know, we set a timer and like we just like stared yeah, at each other. That was it. <laughs> and it was, it's funny because we don't do that anymore, right? right. Like we're just yeah. staring at our phones or we're yeah. watching TV or we're doing, mm -hmm. you know, practices and we're running all over the place. And like, when's the last time you stared into the beautiful eyes of your spouse or mm -hmm. of someone that you love or even of your children or, yeah. or of a good friend? And so I think the challenge is continually like be in the word. Yes, pray together. And, and do the thing that God's asking you to do. And yeah. it's not always that dramatic or yeah. romantic or glamorous. Sometimes it is just pray. Yeah. Okay, so real quick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna 
I didn't tell you guys I was going to do this, but let's, let's go a little deeper this. So, Chris, what does praying together look like every day? Like, like give me a scenario. Honestly, every night before we go to bed, okay. we pray. And we pray for our kids. We pray. Uh, now, it's not always glamorous. We switch. We've argued about praying. Whose turn it is to pray? So, so, there's you, been times, so you take turns each night. We take turns each night. There's been times where we feel so exposed that we're like, man, we're bickering about who is praying to God right Jesus now. Jesus is crying. Yes, yeah. and so it's just like <laughs> we fail all the time, but uh, we take turns. Um, I'm not going to say who. One of us sometimes falls asleep when the other person is praying. It's me, uh, it's and <laughs> and like that, those things happen. But um, it also has created so many uh, very uh, deep and connecting moments mm-hmm. for us because yeah. we're able to just really. Uh, pray for each other and 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 kind of communicate on a different level. Yeah. So just to tell you what these guys do for a living, Chris is a high-ranking police officer. Thank mm-hmm. you for protecting and serving. Thanks for what you do. I'm happy to. Thank and, you. And Jihei is in HR. So also Jihei, thank you for protecting and serving. <laughs> <laughs> and, thank you. I and, do what and I can. doing doing what you do. And and I. I really appreciate that because I, I think when we talk about praying together or we talk about spiritual things, uh, we way overcomplicate it mm-hmm. or, or we, we make it complex when it's not. So I love that just as we're going to bed, we take turns, we pray for each other. It, it's not super spiritual every time. But the, count, the compounding effect of that is, is massive. The compounding effect of just daily together praying, even if it's not perfect, over time is really, really significant. And, and so, so good for you guys. Let's just talk about obedience at large. So foster care and adoption, we'll give you a step if God's been nudging you about that uh, here in, in a minute. But let's just talk about obedience at, at large. Um, what do you think keeps people from obeying God? So I, I love this verse that you've chosen for the entire series from 2 Timothy. And so again, it's, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so being in HR, I recently read an article that talked about how anxiety is now the number one reason why people call out of work, why kids miss school, why so many things. And so this God has not given us a spirit of fear. I think that's it. This is the courageous faith at work. This is the thing like, it's okay to be scared of things that are scary, but if, God is asking you, again, to do a simple thing. And I think a lot of us, too, I think about our kids, and, like, I help out in youth ministry, and so I love teenagers. I think it is a hard, hard time to be a teenager and a young person right now because of social media and phones. But I think of, like, looking stupid. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't want someone to capture you doing something for the first time and looking foolish and then posting it and that that video going viral. You know, like people want a viral video, but not for that reason, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think people are so crippled by that fear of, I don't know what's going to happen and I don't want to look like an idiot. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think this courageous faith, this like, what's this step that God is asking me to do? I think it's so small. I think it is like when, uh, I don't know, when God commands us, like, treat your neighbor the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. If you want someone to text you and ask you out for ice cream, then why don't you text someone and ask them out for ice cream? Mm -hmm. If you want someone to pray for you, why don't you start and pray for someone and then say, and now it's your turn. (laughs) And then, you know, like, it's so small. Like, all of the steps are really small now. And and they're scary, so I don't want to take away from uh, the fact it feels weird, maybe mm-hmm. you look weird or it sounds weird or whatever the case may be, but like I think a lot of us right now are paralyzed yeah. by the fear and the anxiety of like, I don't think this is going to work out. And so my, my prayer for everyone is that we would just truly embrace this verse and really recognize God has not given me a spirit of fear. And when I have a spirit of fear, then I'm not letting God work enough Mm. in me. And so, you know, John 3, 30, I think, is like less of me, more of him. That's great. If you recognize, man, I'm so terrified, then think, praise Jesus. Look at how much room there is for him to grow in me or work in me. So as Chris and GA were talking about this weekend, 
We had a big conversation, and I'm like, well, you know we're like doing a sermon together in essence, right? So let's come up with some points. And so we had a big conversation, and out of that, these three things about courageous faith. So number one, if you're taking notes, is this. It's not about you. It's not about you. And so let me just be the pastor here for a second. God loves you. God cares for you. But not everything is about you. Right? I mean, sometimes I'm like, God, get on my page. And God's going, Chad, get on my page. All right? Because I want to, like, be the center of the universe and everything to kind of revolve around me. And that's not where life is found. When we give and serve, step out of ourselves, even if we're anxious, that's where life is found. Mm -hmm. And so courageous faith begins with, it's, it's, not about, it's not about you. And you were talking, Chris, earlier that that's really just a way of thinking. Yes, absolutely. I, I think it's a, a mindset. And it's one of those things that, that we talk about. It's easy to say, yeah, of course, it's not about me. It's about God having that eternal mindset. We're called to have our hearts and minds set on things above. But... Um, I can pray that when I wake up first thing in the morning and 7.30, 5, I'm already thinking about me. And even with the foster care journey, Jihei talked a little bit earlier, we had a lot of misconceptions going into that and saying like, okay, well, we're going to start this, this foster care thing, this whatever it looks like. Our, you know, the, there are, our stereotypes are there are bad kids in foster care. That's not at all the experience we've had. Uh, the kids we have encountered, the kids, kids we interact with come from a lot of bad circumstances, a lot of bad um, just conditions, and, uh, but are resilient, are some of the most amazing people I've ever uh, come in contact with. Our kids, uh, all seven of our kids are, have a different story, um, whether they're our biological kids or adoptive kids, but they, they're incredible and we've been super blessed by, by that. If uh, my mindset is would have been on on us and uh, in, in you know internally focused the whole time, yeah, uh, we miss out on so much blessing. Our family would not look like it does today, sure. If it was my picture, well, it's inconvenient to bring a kid into your home. Yeah, and uh, it's, yeah. I mean, your own kids are inconvenient, Correct. right? Yes. And, and then and then now you're adding to that. Look at this verse of scripture, everybody. This is Romans twelve one. This is what the Bible says. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, let me just be the pastor for a second. In view of God's mercy means remembering his love for you. Because God loves you, you can trust him. So therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So worship is not just about singing a song, although that's great. Worship is about how we live. We're to be a living sacrifice. We step outside of ourselves, we, we give, we serve. So let me ask you the other side of that coin. Really inconvenient, I'll ask you, Jihei, but have some good things come out of that inconvenience? Of course. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think when you know, Chris talks about what our mindset is. I think it's easy to have this thought that, oh, our house isn't big enough or our, we don't have enough time to give or we don't have the finances, resources, whatever the case may be. We have so many reasons why we could not possibly do the thing that God is asking us to do. And in all honesty, even for us, like, I don't know, when I was growing up, I didn't even wanna have kids. Mm -hmm. You know, like I thought I would live in New York by myself. And that sounded, that sounded nice. And now you know? you're here yeah, in Arizona. Your life looks a little bit dream. different. Yeah. Than and that. now I live in yeah. the New York of Arizona or something. I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, and I am never alone. And that's okay. And, uh, and God has a different plan. And so, again, I don't, we don't say this like, oh, we foster and adopt because we're like so in love with children. Like, I don't know. I don't really think I am most of the time. But yeah. God, again, is at work in my rotten black heart and so I'm so thankful that uh, he allows us to, to be on this journey with him. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's inconvenient in, in some respects. I mean, I actually started working full time, uh, one, because I love my job, but two, also, like kids are expensive. 
And, yeah. and the state actually, you know, if you adopt through foster care, the state actually helps you with a lot of different things, healthcare mm -hmm. and all yeah. these things. And so we're thankful for that. But it's an investment. Yeah. And, and it's a worthwhile investment. I'm thankful that I get to work and I'm thankful that I can help provide for our family as well. And, and there's a sacrifice on everybody's you know, part. And so our kids are sacrificing mm -hmm. some and we're sacrificing. In, in all of that, do you see the love of God at work? So great, yes. In view of God's mercy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sacrifice, but in that sacrifice, are you more fulfilled? For sure. I... I look at my, my own spiritual walk and just how much God has grown us, grown our marriage, grown our, our family through this. And it's definitely not all highs. There's been a lot of lows, but uh, it, God has forced us to, okay, less of us, more of you, mm -hmm. because otherwise we would not be yeah, here. Yeah, done work. Yeah. yeah. For sure. So it's not about you. Live for something bigger than yourself. Be a living sacrifice. That's what worship looks like. Number two, the second thing that you guys talked to me about, take a step and do the next right thing. Just do the next right thing. Mm -hmm. One of the things we say here at Sun Valley is following Jesus is as simple as your next step of obedience. So you just do the next right thing. Um, has it been challenging in that? Sometimes people with courageous faith are like, I got it, mm -hmm. lone wolf, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. Is that how it works? No, of course not. I mean, in our first year of being foster parents, it was so funny because we were like so prideful and we, were, we had like this martyr mindset of like, oh, God has put this cross on us to bear and we'll do it because we love Jesus so much. And then we, I don't know, kind of turned into jerks yeah. about it. Uh, and it was also super lonely and also very difficult having three kids and then a new uh, toddler with us. And uh, and God just really just squashed me down a lot that year uh, and ever since, which I'm thankful for. Mm -hmm. But, um, oh man, I've actually forgotten what your question just, was. Just of not doing it alone? Oh yeah, not doing help? it alone. So that yeah. was my, I was going to eventually get there. there the beautiful thing is that we have an incredible community. Mm -hmm. And so we're so thankful. We've always kind of been in small groups and, you know, Sun Valley loves small groups. They always push that and it's for a reason because you shouldn't do life alone. And so um, I think when I look around nowadays and I see people who are lonely, even in the midst of large families or in a giant group of, of people, people feel so alone. And so my heart for everyone in this, you know, what's the next right thing God wants me to do? I really think he wants us to connect. He might just want you to actually connect to the person you're married to if mm -hmm. you don't feel connected to them. He might want you to feel connected to your children if you don't feel very connected to them. Um, I read this thing one time that was like, if you know like the last five people Kim Kardashian has dated, but you don't know the five kids your kids eat lunch with, yeah. that's a problem. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I was like, yeah, like that's, yeah. I do actually think I know all five Kim Kardashian boyfriends, but like, yeah. um, <laughs> you know. Like, do I invest in my kids or are we stuck on our phones or in whatever? Like, who, what is it to Jennifer Gardner if I follow her on Instagram? Mm -hmm. But if I'm not following my kids and their kid, and their friends or they're not coming over to our house and I don't know their names and I don't know what their family situation is, like, I'm missing the boat. Yeah. And so live life in community, but, like, let's connect to the people who are actually around us because mm -hmm. we don't want people to jump into foster care and and adoption land, because it's a, it's a scary place and the mm -hmm. waters are pretty rough. Yeah. Go there if you feel like, man, we're a team. We can go into this thing together. Yeah. And man, we have a team around us who also wants to walk with us in this journey. Yeah. And so maybe it is foster care, maybe it's adoption, maybe it's something totally different that God is specifically nudging you towards. But I just see so much disconnection these days. And so my uh, heart and prayer for everyone here who's listening, I really think the thing God wants for us in this courageous faith journey is to go on this journey with the people around us, like truly, like together. Yeah. yeah. And I, I would just add uh, to that. We naturally want to see this big picture of what God's doing. Uh, but Really, our job is to just go to the next, take the ne next step. It's like a big connect the dots. We want to see the end result. What does it look like? And we base our success or like, oh, we should have done this thing 
on the outcome of whatever it was when in reality, God's just calling us to, to take that step. And it, it may look completely different yeah. uh, than what we imagine. And I assure you, it's much more beautiful in the end. In my, uh, I'm in an alpha group right now. And uh, actually my, the alpha group I'm in is all athletes and then there's me. So there's all these huge guys, and I look like a five-year-old kid when I'm standing next to them. But um, one of the questions was, you know, if you could sit down with Jesus, what would you ask him? And my thought was, well, I, I would ask him the future. Like, what's going to happen with this? What's going to happen with that? And then I realized he wouldn't tell me, because that's not how he works. Um, Actually, what I would ask him is, what do you want to tell me, Jesus? Because I'm not smart enough even to ask good questions. You, go. I'll listen, right? But the reason that he doesn't tell us the future is because he wants us to trust him. And it, and it is a lot like the connect the dots. But that's, that's, how he, that's how he works. So you just do the next right thing. This is the verse for that one, Philippians 2.13. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. And I've just found in those little things, I mean, you guys saw the videos, but then there were probably a hundred things that came together in your journey yeah. with foster care and adoption. Third one that we talked about. So it's not about you. Take a step, do the next right thing. And then you said this, Jihei, I love this. Number three, everyone is called to do something. Mm -hmm. So God is speaking to all of us about something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... I would say, one, pray. And so even if you're not married, you know, you can pray and, uh, and pray with your friends, have a little prayer group if you want. Um, read the word and like read the word and believe what it says because mm -hmm. God is so good and he speaks yeah. to us through his word. And so I love, I love the Bible. I think it is a beautiful letter to us that God uh, speaks to us and he, again, can nudge us through his word. And so, you know, if you are not called to foster care adoption, again, that's A-OK. -okay. Um, but the call is, what what is he asking you to do? And so the finding out what the next right thing is, uh, I think a lot of us want an experience with God or we want an experience even with someone else. So we think about these things and we want an experience, but we don't do the thing to get us to the experience. And sometimes the experience is a hard one. I mean, sometimes uh, last year, the Lord really was working on me to like be kinder and speak nicer to people. Yeah. So that's what I'm working on. I'm a work in progress all the time. And so we had an issue. And again, we've been married for over 18 years and sometimes I still hurt his feelings. And so I have to apologize. And I can I, be very sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he catches the bad guys, but yeah, he has this like beautiful bleeding heart and I hurt it sometimes. And so then we have to go through this tunnel of chaos where it's like, hey, I'm sorry. And we work through the hard feelings and all this stuff, but then we get this beautiful experience yeah. on this side. Yeah. But if I think about it and I just want this, but I don't do the work there, I'm not gonna get here. And so all of us, whatever that is, I, I really think God's saying something to every person here. Yeah. What is that little thing? And it doesn't have to be huge. What is that thing that you are thinking about and the experience that you want? But what is that line that God is asking you to walk? I think sometimes it's even just showing up. We, yeah. uh, uh, over eight years ago, I was meeting with a friend, uh, doing accountability, and I recognized issues in my friend's life and said, this guy needs to celebrate recovery. Uh, so. I showed up and I said, you know what, in, in my head, I'm going to go to celebrate recovery with him because he needs it. Uh, and, and I attended and I looked around and I said, okay, there's lust over here. There's a pride group over here. There's addictive behaviors. I can go to any of those. And showing up, I started realizing, wait a minute, I think God has me here for me. And I started experiencing uh, growth and healing in so many areas that I never thought was even possible. And so showing up, doing something, whatever it is that God's calling you to do, um, you may think it's, it's for one thing, but uh, truly God is going to be working through you uh, in, in that time when you obey. It's not about you. Just do the next right thing and everybody's called to do something. Love this verse, James 1.22. This would be a great verse to memorize. It says, do not merely listen to the word.
and so deceive yourselves. Look at the last sentence. Do what it says. Sometimes we deceive ourselves. We went to church. We sang a song. We went to the Bible study. Following Jesus is about obedience. Courageous faith. Doing what he says. If God is nudging you in the realm of foster care, we're going to give you a step that you can take. Uh, just let us know that, and we'll provide an orientation from you. It doesn't mean you're signing up for the rest of your life. It's you taking a step uh, to just hear more. And so you can register for that at foster.sv.cc. And I want to encourage you to do that because it could be that God might use you to change the trajectory of a kid's life forever. But for all of us, it might not be foster care and adoption. For all of us, let's just do what he says. And in that practice, courageous faith. Chris, would you pray for us? I'd love to. Holy Spirit, come. God, we pray for, for your will in our lives, Lord. We pray that uh, we would be less, you would be more. God, we pray for all your children who are hurting right now. Uh, Lord, that you would use us, God, in big ways and small ways, Lord, that we uh, may never know. But through obedience, uh, you would be glorified. God, I pray that we would not deceive ourselves and walk out, out of here or wherever we're at and, uh, and ignore your word, but we would do what it says, Lord. Uh, we know that you have the victory and that we can trust you. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, what a great service. We hope it was impactful and just what you needed. We are excited to help you grow in your faith and we hope today did just that. Just a reminder that we stream here every single weekend on Sundays and hope to see you right back here each week. If you wanna to continue to dig into scripture and learn more about what it means to follow Jesus in your everyday life, be sure to subscribe to our daily devotionals for three to five minute videos that we send out Monday through Friday from leaders and pastors in our church. You can subscribe to those by going to daily.sv.cc. And if you're looking to join us in person, we're six different locations around the Phoenix area, and we'd love to see you in person any weekend. Remember to connect with us through social media throughout the week. We'd love to see and share what God is doing in your lives. We're at Sun Valley CC on all platforms. We hope that you'll join us again next week. See you later.